significance. With that, uh, I thank uh, the office bearers of NSA and all the speakers uh, who have agreed to address uh, in this two day national level webinar on biodiversity hotspots of India. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And hello, everyone. I'm Abhishek Mishra, President, Natural Science Association. On behalf of NSA, I welcome you, ma'am, for natural for the national webinar on biodiversity hotspots of India. Dr. Mehreen has done her dual BS MS from IASER Mohali and PhD from Center for Ecological Science, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, on distribution on activity and feeding ecology of Himalayan gray langur in Kashmir, Himalaya. She is also a member of IUCN South Asia section of Primate Specialist Group. She is also co-founder of Association of India Primatologists. Currently, she is head of Kashmir-based organization, Wildlife Research and Conservation Foundation, WRCF. I heartily welcome you, ma'am, to the virtual stage. Hello. Ma'am, you can start with your presentation. Yeah, hi. Thank you so much, Abhishek. It is really a pleasure to, uh, as I mentioned it before, I've spent some good amount of time of my life in Bangalore, and it's really a pleasure to speak to you Bangaloreans again. I'll uh, make, uh, I'll try to keep it very short and brief. Uh, so the talk would revolve around the general flora and fauna, the wildlife that we have in the Kashmir Himalayas, and you know, so as uh, Dr. Jayashankar already mentioned that I have done my PhD on Himalayan Langur. Unfortunately, I will not cover that part of uh, the research in this talk. So I'll mostly talk about the general uh, wildlife of JNK. So I'll just share my screen. <coughs> So can you see the screen? Yes, ma'am, we can see. So um, since all of you are aware that why we have gathered here, we are here to celebrate Wildlife Week for this year. And uh, just to lay a little more importance on the wildlife that we have, this week is celebrated all across the country. And on the right over here, you see a female hangul. I accidentally, by chance, happened to be there when this female was walking inside the national, Dasi Ram National Park. So this is a very, uh, you must, you all must, must be aware that hangul is the uh, uh, symbol of Kashmir. And um, why is it the symbol of Kashmir? And you'll get to know about it. So I'll quickly move to towards my topic. Just to give you a brief idea what wildlife is, what do, what we know of wildlife, it's basically all the undomesticated animals are called wildlife. It can be free-ranging birds and animals or wild-growing plants, microorganisms, and even habitat where these animals exist. So they can be water birds. I hope you can see my uh, cursor on the screen. So they can be water birds or the migratory birds, which we find uh, migrating all across the globe. And this is uh, the great uh, grid that we find in the Kashmir Himalayas, in the water bodies of Kashmir Himalayas. Or they can be terrestrial, free ranging birds. Any sorts of ungulates. Here in the picture, you can see two female hungers again, or uh, non human primates, and including these. Uh, the wild alpine flora uh, can also be termed as wildlife. Right. So some of the benefits that we know or and we are aware of uh, this wildlife is they, they form an important component of our ecosystem as they form the vital uh, parts of the food chains and the food webs that we have or that we know of. They are important components of biogeochemical cycles, energy flow through these various profit levels, right? So um, it, um, the, I've taken this picture from the biome project. It 
very cutely sums up various uh, food webs that uh, exist in nature and each individual which you can see over here has their ecosystem functions which they play. So if one of these is uh, affected by any reason, be it anthropogenic or climatic reasons, so that will play a disastrous role in these, uh, or that will deplete this uh, balance or affect this balance disastrously. So um, we have this beautiful wildlife over here and we are celebrating it and we have a week dedicated for it. But unfortunately, there are various other threats which, uh, which, uh, which can be either anthropogenic threats or the natural threats which, we, uh, uh, which the wildlife faces. Be it the introduction of the exotic plants and species, now, nowadays it has become a trend of having pets of uh, uh, non-breeding, uh, non-native species of pets. Um, we have, uh, we have, uh, we know of uh, um, introduced fish species in the natural or the freshwater systems of uh, various parts of the world, which have become invasive species and unfortunately have caused a decrease in the natural, natural fish populations. And one of the examples of that is the uh, the trout fish that we find in the Himalayan freshwater bodies. Now, which was basically an introduced fish species during the British time, and it has unfortunately taken up the entire natural fish uh, uh, species that we had in our freshwater bodies. So, um, it, uh, plants, we have many uh, records of exotic and invasive plant species, Lantana being one of the uh, most invasive plant species which has affected the natural wildlife of a specific ecosystem. Um, habitat loss is one of the major threats that the wildlife is facing, habitat fragmentation and of course illegal poaching and the wildlife trade that has happened and that is uh, happening illegally right now has also posed greater threats to the wildlife in general. Apart from these, pollution is one of the biggest reasons and um, the, uh, the major culprit or the slow uh, killer is the climate change that is affecting not just the wild animals, maybe I would say the humans as well. So all these factors put together has, has posed serious threats to the wildlife or the biodiversity in general that we have or that we see. As I was mentioning earlier as well, that um, the change or the change in the uh, food chains can cause unbalances. For example, if to give you an example, if one of the species as a secondary consumer, for example, here I have shown a purple toad, it goes extinct or the population by some reasons, be it anthropogenic or the natural reasons, the population will decrease, this will directly affect the, uh, the dependent populations or the dependent species for in this case, for example, the Indian cobra. And if the populations of Indian cobras affect, uh, either increase or decrease, that is, in, that is uh, of course, going to affect the rodent populations, and which can be a devastation, uh, can, can be the sources of diseases if there are a lot of rodents roaming around in our cities or even in our forest area. Right. So, this is just to give you an idea of what will happen if one of these um, individuals in these food chains gets lost or gets drastically affected by certain reasons. Right? For example, here I've shown if insects uh, become extinct, it can affect a major chunk of the uh, wild species. It will affect the bird populations which feed on these insects and then um, may affect the, uh, may, may cause a further cascading effect in the process food chains, right? So it's not that the, uh, this imbalance in the food chain is just going to affect these animals, but in the longer run, it can, it can and it is 
posing a threat to the human uh, humans as well and posing a serious danger to human loss as well and can cause the loss of genetic information as well like um i understand this is a very depressing thought that um humans are the reasons behind all of the uh, biodiversity impact and we are in the anthropocene and humans play a major role uh, as we hit towards the sixth mass extinction just to give you uh, show you the brighter side of the world as well since the topic revolves around the wildlife of jammu and kashmir and we know that jnk is somewhere in the mountains so mountains have always been a subject of numerous books and poems they have we have associated with its heroic deeds and uh, wars or let's say adventure and will power and strength to the mountains uh, many uh, mystic and romantic poetry has also been written associated or in honor of the mountains right be it the valley that the create or the gushing water and the stream and what not what what else can you think of the mountains right so um, they have always been places of prayer and adoration for many there have been priests and saints they could who could find solace sitting in somewhere in the himalayas and could uh, you know find their peace so humans have always um, looked up to mountains as the sources of symbol or the, as the sources of tranquility and we have always looked looked up uh, to these mountains uh to these mu- uh, mighty mountains that we have around us right so uh, this is the, in the picture over here this is the very beautiful landscape of the ladakh region the trans himalayan region and uh, one would be super mesmerized with the landscape over there and one would uh, really feel that this is a different part of the world that uh, uh that uh, both the humans and the animals are existing in that space so just to give you a um scientific perspective to the mountains since humans have always associated mountains with spirituality very uh very less attention has been given to the um to the biodiversity that is around us and we know that if you look at india as such we know that the plains have uh, if we start talking about the conservation statuses or the conservation um, um efforts that have been put forward uh, associated with wildlife it is always the south or the plains that get much uh, uh, attention as compared to the mountains because um you know one it's very difficult to reach up to the mountains and two we don't see mountains as we see the plains as such so just to give you a scientific perspective mountains are like open knowledge laboratories that can have house many interesting and intriguing stories about species and communities and uh, they have provided us knowledge about species which have evolved and adapted in various ways to their environment right they are the places where one can understand and observe evolution of species if we look deeply and try to understand how various species have evolved and have um, adapted um, in such kind of an environment it is very interesting to observe evolution of the species um they have also borne witness to the many different ways their inhabitants have lived in harmony with them typically um it's the uh humans and the wildlife that has always lived in harmony in these mountains adapting to their environment and using and manipulating the gifts of earth and often striving to keep the environment as healthy as possible so this was just to give you a perspective a scientific perspective how and why mountains can be important for us Okay, sorry about the uh, yeah yeah so if we look at the himalayan ecosystem himalayas are the youngest mountains they are still growing we know and they form one of the uh, major biodiversity hotspots in india along with the other um, 
the biodiversity hotspots that we have in India. Um, Himalayas form they uh, they are the uh, mountain ranges which are found all across the three different countries, all the way from Bhutan, Nepal, and the uh, uh, Indian and the India India as a country. So we have Himalayas running all the way from eastern, western, and the central Himalaya. There are three different uh, divisions as to say of the Himalayan ecosystem. So here you can see it runs all the way and basically it forms a, an a important barrier between the between the in uh, between the Tibetan plateau and the uh, Indian plains or Indian plains. Uh, it forms a very important barrier. So that is why the the flora that exists or the flora and the fauna or wildlife that exists in the Himalayan region is is endemic and very typical of this region. Just to give you an idea, Himalayas harbors various um, large mammals such as the Asiatic black bear or the charismatic snow leopard, the thar or the um, uh, red panda of the eastern Himalayas. We also have interesting bird species that exist or that uh, uh, that are endemic to this region, and uh, leave aside the uh, no, uh, yeah the plants uh, as well. So just to give you a perspective, what we are going to talk about is uh, so the state of um, JNK, the erstwhile state of JNK had three important divisions: the Jammu, Kashmir, and the Ladakh. So uh, most of the Ladakh is. Uh, the trans is also called the Trans Himalayan Biogeographic Zone, and the rest is the Himalayan Geographic Zone, which falls in the Jammu and the Kashmir region. So, the Himalayan region is uh, forms a major chunk of the total area of the state, and uh, it's around uh, 2 lakh square kilometers of that area which forms the Himalayan. And which is the six, which uh, is basically the six percent um, of the entire Indian landmass. And if we look at the different biotic provinces or the biotic zones that are, uh, or if we can divide the entire state into the different biotic provinces, if you look here, the uh, the blue shaded regions. These are these from the northwestern Himalaya, and northwestern Himalaya are mostly the states of uh, Jammu and Kashmir and the Himachal Uttarakhand areas. Then there are there is uh, uh, West Himalaya and the Central Himalaya uh, towards the uh, Nepal, and then the East Himalaya towards the eastern parts of the country. Right, so northwestern Himalaya forms around two percent of the uh, Indian land mass. So uh, I'll be talking about or laying much of my focus of this uh, talk on the 2A biotic zone or the northwestern Himalayan of northwestern Himalayan region. So uh, this is uh, an elevation map of the Kashmir Valley. So round over here you see a bowl-shaped um, geographical structure which is surrounded by a ring of mountain uh, ranges. These mountain ranges, um, so these mountain ranges have uh, uh, just to call out the names of these mountain ranges. We have Pir Panchal towards the west, the uh, range which starts all the way from um, Banihal as we cross. Uh, Kazinag and Shamsabari towards the north. Uh, then we have Kishan Ganga and the Zabarwan mountain range towards the west. Uh, so this entire ring of mountains um, surrounds this low lying, slightly low lying valley of Kashmir, and there is a beautiful lay, uh, uh, river, Jhelum River, which um, flows all the way from south of Kashmir to to the north of Kashmir and uh, moves out or flows out from Uri towards Pakistan region. So just to give you a perspective of how or what the Kashmir Valley looks like. Um,
so this geography of kashmir is very unique to the valley in the himalayas and this uniqueness gives rise to the endemism right so if we um, talk about the endemism of this region the animals which are found here um there are many large and small mammals which have very restricted range sizes some of the best examples of endemism which uh, which we find here in the uh, kashmir himalayas is hangu which you can see here it has a very restricted range in dachigam and some adjacent forests of the zabarwan mountains the himalayan langur which will were actually thought to be only present in dachigam and the kishtawad mountains are in fact distributed all across the uh, uh, mountain ranges all the way from up here uh, somewhere in bangat to uh, down here in the uh, daksun areas in the east and kazinar national park as well so um, very recently so basically the work that i have done during my phd establishes the presence of himalayan langur in the entire uh, in all the uh, mountainous uh, uh, regions of the valley then we have uh, another um, important goat species the mountain goat the markhor which is found in the kazinar national park and in pockets um, of uh, peer panchal range there are many bird species that we find here which are the, which are residents and breed in these mountains such as the orange bullfinch uh, the black and yellow grouse beak the pheasant such as the chukar the monal and the coclas which are found in these mountain ranges we also witness many migratory birds during winters uh, in the wetlands of kashmir such as the mallard or the northern pintail or the shawlers that we have here that we find here during the winters among the insect species we have regal apollo which is basically a high altitude butterfly which is found at the elevations up to 4000 meters and the kashmir tortoise shell which is the most common one which is found in the lower elevations uh, there are certain species which are only found in certain areas and we can use this information basically to promote awareness and generate funds for its ecological conservation uh, so these are just some of the examples of the biodiversity uh, the larger biodiversity basically that i have told you here uh, but there are various uh, insects birds and plants and other life forms which are still waiting to be discovered in these um, areas and uh, i'll Uh, talk about the recent publications that we have had here we are now getting uh, some of the tropical bird species as well and we have uh, uh, cited some of the tropical bird species which have started breeding in um, in the himalayan uh, zones as well and there could be many reasons to it and one of the reasons is the climate change that could be the reason for the uh, range extinction that the birds and animals are showing so um when we talk about the protected areas of jnk uh, the jammu and kashmir region has a very huge uh, network of protected areas include which includes the national parks the wildlife sanctuaries conservation reserves and wetland networks so this area comprises uh, its geographically around 42000 square kilometers of area which forms around 11% of the wildlife area which is three times larger than the wildlife area found uh, in the entire uh, country so kashmir is bestowed with one of the beautiful um, landscapes also we have one of the largest wildlife areas and all of them are under protection they are given special protections specifically for uh, protection of the wildlife that we have here right uh, so just to uh, give you an idea we have around three national parks um, kazinar national park up in the north uh, then we have dachigam national park somewhere fog in the center of the entire valley we have kishtawar national park towards the uh, southern region um, there are 13 wildlife sanctuaries we have gulmarg wildlife sanctuary tatakuti wildlife sanctuary hirpura wildlife sanctuary 
uh, over a aru by the sanctuary in pahalgaon uh, i'm saying out these words loudly because i'm sure most of you must have heard about these names of pahalgaon gulmarg and konmarg um and we have around 14 wetlands all across the state including jammu and kashmir so that forms a very huge area and these these areas uh, uh, gives rise or uh, these protected areas uh, gives rise to some of the beautiful endemic uh, wildlife that we found that we find in these areas just to give you a perspective of the mammalian diversity which is found in the himalayan region so if we look at the entire himalayas this is the breakout of uh, all the uh, mammalian diversity the number of species that are found in these areas and if we specifically look at the um, this uh, northwestern himalayan region there are around 5 there are around 11 um, there are around uh, 111 species of mammals which are found in this northwestern himalayan region and if we talk about the avian diversity uh, avian diversity in the himalayas the northwestern himalaya uh, uh, has around 524 uh, uh, bird species which are found in this region and if we look at the mammalian diversity in jammu and kashmir only we have around 91 species of mammals found in jnk of which 75 are in kashmir are found in kashmir and 79 are found in jammu region um unfortunately uh, we have one critically endangered mammal species and uh, two uh, uh, two endemic species which are found here six endangered mammalian species six vulnerable and five near threatened uh, uh, mammalian species which are found in entire jnk the only um, critically endangered species we have is the uh, kashmir red bear or the hangul it um, its distribution was initially thought to be all the way um, uh, in uh, himachal to found in himachal and all the way till gurez but unfortunately their population sizes have reduced to around Uh, uh less than two, less than 300 individuals as per the last census in 2020 and we have only 200 species of this red bear and uh, their ranges have been restricted only to the dachigam national park so um there are various conservation uh, methods that we have used or the state in general has uh, uh, used towards the conservation of this species um we have been working on the radio telemetry when i say we i mean the state government here has been laying emphasis on the conservation of the species they have done studies on the radio telemetry to find out the range of the um hangul that we find in dachigam did they roam did they move around or explore new territories as well and we have established uh, meta populations in tral and gandharbal areas so as to help uh, um, the conservation of the species by uh, uh, captive breeding so there are few uh, conservation methods which the state has been planning to do or has been doing for quite some time and uh, you know, we are hoping that the population numbers start increasing in the coming future just to give you an i uh, just to give you a, a, an idea that uh, we had around 3000 and more than 3000 species of hangul roaming in the forests of the state in the kashmir himalayan region and unfortunately soon after independence because these areas were uh, also game reserves unfortunately these uh, hangul were hunted for meat so uh, their population reduced drastically we still do not know there are various theories which are associated with it decline in the population of the species so um, now we are only left with around 200 individuals of this um, beautiful uh, bear species another endemic species is the himalayan gray layer gray langur um 
initially it was thought to be as a, a different species of the lungwheel that we find in the um, Uttaranchal, uh, in Uttarakhand. So there was the taxo there was taxonomic confusion between these two species because uh, of the different because of the variations in the uh, coloration of the two lungwheels that we, that uh, that are found in Kashmir and that are found in um, Uttaranchal. Uttarakhand, sorry. So now a uh, recent work has established that it is basically a single species. And um, initially it was the, the Lambur species which was found in Kashmir was called as Semenopathicus ajax. But this, this, uh, this study in uh, 2020 and 21 has established a single species in the entire northwest Himalaya. So the name has changed a bit. It is now called as Semenopathicus cystaceus, which is also found in Kashmir as well. So this is also an endangered uh, lungweed species, an endangered high, alt high altitude uh, yeah, non-human primate, which is found in this region. Among the ungulates, we have uh, Kashmir musk there. Again, um, there is very little information or very little scientific knowledge about the musk bears which are found here. These are endangered and endangered mostly because of illegal trade. Their musk pods, they are killed for their musk pods which are used in perfumery and cosmetics widely throughout the globe. So a musk bear is killed for that and unfortunately we, have, we are left with only few of the musk bears. So in the Himalayas there are uh, two species of musk bears which are known so far, the Himalayan musk bear and the Kashmir musk bear. So it is believed, researchers believe that Kashmir has both of them. There is an overlap of the Himalayan musk bear and the Kashmir musk bear. Whereas the Himalayan musk bear is found down south, I mean uh, towards the Himachal, uh, Himalayas. Um, we also have uh, among the big cats or the large carnivores, we have snow leopards, which are, are very, which are restricted to the higher elevations of Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, we have established that there is established presence of snow leopard in the Ladakh region uh, in Kashtawad National Park, but the state and the central government are now working towards the conservation of this uh, beautiful cat species. So there are projects which have been recently started in the state to establish their presence in Gure's areas, Gure's region as well. Among the weasels, um, the Kashmir Himalayas have the mountain weasels. These are very small, cute uh, creatures wherever you find, wherever, if, if ever you get a chance to go towards the alpine regions of the Kashmir, you will get a uh, you'll get to see these beautiful mountain weasels roaming around and from, you know, moving around from one rock uh, to another uh, rock nest. Uh, Kashmir also houses one of the largest mountain goat uh, called the Markor. It is called Markor. There are various uh, um, uh, theories why it is called Markor. So basically, um, um, I believe core is something if you uh, break the word apart, so Mar is in, uh, I think, uh, the one who eats meat and Khor is uh, the one who consumes that. So Mar Khor, it was called to be so. It was believed that it used to kill, uh, it is, uh, it used to kill meat and eat meat, but actually it is a mountain goat. It is a herbivorous species and it is found in the southern slopes of Pir Panchal um, and in the mountain, uh, ranges of the Kazinaz National Park. So uh, they are only restricted on the left of the Jhelum. There is Jhelum going across the entire valley. So the Markor is uh, only found in this uh, mountain range, in the Peer Panchal range. And in, um, Markor is also the, uh, the uh, national animal of Pakistan. And uh, there are various um, um, organizations along with the state uh, wildlife department. They have played critical role in the conservation of this mountain goat. One, because they are facing um, threats due to various reason, reasons. And um, one, climate change is one of the reasons which these animals uh, face. Second is the construction in these areas. So uh, these animals are facing those 
challenges and state and various uh, organizations, for example, Wildlife Trust of India, they have been working uh, uh, tirelessly towards the conservation of this large mountain group, the Marku, in Kashmir. Among the avian diversity, we have around uh, 437 species, which are only found in JNK. And this, this number is still counting. Uh, as I told you before, that uh, we also have some of the uh, tropical birds which are coming in recently and uh, uh, breeding in these uh, in the uh, you know water bodies of Kashmir. So this number is rising, and uh, there are still new records coming out from the um, uh, from this area. Right. So we have around six endemic uh, species of birds, two of which are critically endangered. And we have four endangered and 10 vulnerable bird species which are found in the genome. Uh, among the critically endangered uh, species, we have slender-billed vulture. This is the most threatened vulture in the world with a very narrow distribution range. And uh, one of the major threats is the usage of diclofenac. And I believe that was that is uh, the reason of most of the vultures, the, the populations of these vultures getting affected is uh, the usage of diclofenac, the unintentional poisoning and accidental collisions of this uh, bird. Um, one of the interesting uh, bird, which um, so I've been working in Kashmir for the past ten years, and uh, I have been going out for birdings, uh, birding sessions. We have had uh, various sessions of various sorts, but. Since for the past 10 years, I have never seen this bird here around. Um, so the last record that we have found, or the last record of this bird was around uh, the Buller region, and it was in 1980s, which mostly breeds in around in China and Mongolia, Russia and uh, Bangladesh. But there are the records which show, which show presence of this bird, a last fish eagle. But for the past 10 years or maybe more, we have no records of this bird. Either this bird is locally extinct or uh, we don't know what are the reasons behind that. So there are various, very, very little um, scientific information or in general ecological information about the various wildlife that we have here. Mm. Um, another interesting uh, bird species which is found both in the Jammu and Kashmir provinces is the Egyptian vulture, which is distributed widely it's an old world vulture it's also called pharaoh's chick it's a small size uh, bird which is similar to kite has a naked head and short and neck uh, entirely feathered so i remember there has been there was a recent uh, case somewhere around 2007 where uh, some of the bird watchers had found uh, one of the uh, egyptian vulture it was a very big story of finding an Egyptian vulture uh, in JNK. And after that, we have never seen Egyptian vultures here. Some of the vulnerable birds of JNK is uh, Western Tragopon is one of the vulnerable birds. Apart from that, we have uh, a, a very beautiful small bird, Kashmir flycatcher, which is known to have, uh, which is known to migrate all the way from south of India to Kashmir only to breed here in the forests of Kashmir during summer time. So Kashmir flycatcher is one of the, is also the vulnerable birds of Kashmir. And when we talk about endemism among birds, we have orange bullfinch, which uh, one can easily find if you go to Dachi, one will easily find orange bullfinches. We have Kashmir nakhat, which is uh, specific to Kashmir. There are birders which, uh, you know, who uh, pay a good amount of money just to see this Kashmir Nathach. This is a very small, cute looking bird that you will find in the um, forests of um, this region. We have uh, the Kashmir flycatcher, which is a summer visitor and breeds here. And uh, um, very till very recently, the Western Tragopan was thought to be locally extinct, but there are researchers which have um, used camera trapping and they have found 
Western Tragopans in uh, in Kazinag National Park, and that has established the presence of Western Tragopan in this region again. So, not to bore you with what um, what different birds or what different animal species we find here, just to give you a perspective, since I come from an academ academic background and the wildlife was not my forte. I was more, um, um, I had my expertise in planetology and more in animal behavior. So while I was working here during my PhD, I realized that Kashmir in general, uh, even though it has beautiful and unique biodiversity, Kashmir in general has, uh, the local people here have very little knowledge about the biodiversity or the diversity that we have around in our forests. So one of the, um, 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 so I sat and talked uh, with various other similar minded people and we came up with starting up an organization in 2018 and we registered this organization by the name Wildlife Research and Conservation Foundation. And uh, main goal or main motto of this organization was to impart the conservation education knowledge. And the reason for that was one cannot do conservation if we do not know what we have in our, uh, what we have in hand. What, what, if we don't know the value of those things, we cannot conserve those things. So we had to take a step back. We had to start from the beginning. So uh, I will, along with my colleagues, uh, we started this organization and we started doing uh, awareness campaigns in the region with the help, of course, of the um, wildlife department of uh, JNK. So um, I'll just give you a quick brief of what sort of things we do. So we have raised awareness so far in around uh, 30 odd villages of the entire JNK, which have in and have included um, more than a thousand students of different age groups. We do continuous awareness campaigns in these regions. We go and talk to these people, tell them the importance of saving the wildlife that we have here, or talk to the indigenous people and look forward for solutions they have and um, for helping towards the uh, conservation of various species over here. Um, so we mostly engage with school children and younger generation of um, uh, the local Kashmiris that we have here. So the main idea is to instill the spirit of conservation. Uh, have I exceeded my time? Okay, I'll, so I'll quickly. Still time. Okay. So um, since uh, we started in 2018, we started with. Uh, awareness campaigns, but unfortunately in 2019, 2020 and 21, we faced uh, COVID and we had to do all these uh, campaigns online. And one of the, um, one of the uh, major uh, impacts that we had so far on the local people was we started a first wildlife photography competition in Kashmir and we have um, published whatever photographs we got in that competition and we published Kashmir's first coffee table book which showcases the wildlife of JNK. It includes mammals, birds and uh, um, uh, yeah, insect flora, uh, insect fauna of the um, area. So apart from that we have always, we have been involved in various citizen science projects. With, um, last year only we collaborated with various uh, organizations of the country and uh, WRCF was the regional partner of uh, this Dragonfly Festival. This is uh, not to boast about the organization but to give you an idea that there is a lack of knowledge from this region, from the northwestern Himalayan region. Even though we, have, we know about various species, we do not know about their ecological or their behavioral aspects or the behavioral perspectives of these animals. So just to, um, uh, so this organization mostly deals with uh, bringing Kashmir to the forefront of wildlife conservation and raising awareness about the different flora and fauna that we find here in Kashmir. We have also um, 
participated in the Big Butterfly Month. This was the first time that um, people could see Kashmiri uh, butterflies on the map. Um, so I was talking about various um, avian diversity that we have in Kashmir, and very recently in August, we published uh, uh, miscellaneous notes in uh, the Journal of Bombay Natural History. And uh, this was about the record of Little Tern from Kashmir Valley. Little Tern is basically a tropical bird which has not been recorded here previously. And this was the first time that we could see uh, individuals of Little Tern who are breeding in Kashmir. This, there could be various reasons. And one of the reasons we believe is the real extension, uh, uh, extension of these uh, bird species because the climate of this region is changing and uh, God knows what is going to happen to the local uh, biodiversity of this place. So um, just to tell you that uh, Muin uh, Hamad is a first year bachelor student now when he published this um, data. He was just, he had just uh, cleared his 12th examination and this is um, a feather in the cap a beautiful feather in the cap to tell you that we, as this movement of wildlife conservation started in Kashmir, this was the beautiful um, 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 gift that we could receive. So we, you can reach out to us. We have a website, wrcf.in. Um, we do all sorts of work starting from conservation education and awareness. We have research projects related to exploring various wildlife as well as uh, um, some specific projects, important projects, which include the uh, wild flora and fauna of this region. We have also started um, illustrate, uh, uh, also started um, artists for wildlife group for the conservation of uh, wildlife in Kashmir. So uh, this is the email address. You can reach out to me on any of these email addresses if you have any questions, queries, or you want to follow the, um, the our work on the social media, these are the links you can find over there. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for such a wonderful, interactive, and informative presentation. Everyone present here is enlightened with your talk and appreciate your presentation. From learning about the threats to animal, about mountains, to geographical area and endangered species of Jammu and Kashmir, entire presentation was really informative, full of knowledge and helpful. Thank you so much, ma'am, once again for such a wonderful presentation. Now the webinar is open for the question and answer session. Attendees can ask the questions or can keep the questions in the chat box quickly. Dr. Maharin uh, Jai Shankar here. Yeah. Uh, Maharin, this is in general uh, because we are talking about uh, these regions. Uh, the Himalayas, uh, specifically the Jammu and Kashmir, uh, in addition to your reaching out these inroads to create awareness with the local, uh, there, there are threats that you mentioned, including climate change and uh, other issues. Uh, can you focus on the the security concerns, how that in a way is an obstacle to conservation or the wildlife. Is there anything in that regard? Um, so, um, so I believe that wildlife conservation has. Um, so over the past 30 years, Kashmir has faced political unrest and this political unrest has had an impact on the conservation or in general has had an impact on the wildlife of this region. So um, yes, security concerns are a problem because going to these protected areas is difficult. We have to ha we have to um, cross various, um, you know, um, let's say we have to cross army, we have to cross the uh, concerned departments, we have to get permits from all these places before we even enter to these areas. And uh, uh, I don't know, unfortunately, most of these areas are in the mountains and these are very susceptible areas. So these have posed threats. And um, 
as you rightly said that um, so um, one of the thing that i have always talked about is when i go and talk to people and you know start raising awareness about wildlife in general about environment in general so i usually get this question that why should we worry about wildlife when there, there are people dying over here when we have other imp- other things to worry about why should we even bother about wildlife so this is a challenge for us and uh, um, yeah yeah that's how but then but then while um, it's not that ki it's only a threat to the um, um, to the wildlife in many ways security has helped wildlife as well for example for the conservation of markhor because it's a mountain goat which is found towards the border areas of india and pakistan and uh, army has been very supportive of all the conservation efforts the uh, various organizations have played so far so if to look at it in a broader scale um, to be honest we don't know what was the what was the status of various wild animals 30 years back we are now looking at them um, you know we are now looking at the different population sizes of all the wild animals that we have here if we talk about it maybe these restrictions were good because not much footfall not much human footfall has been in these particular areas so in a way it was good but um, we don't know if it was really good or not and i don't know how to put that in the correct words thank you thank you question? yeah yeah thank you for <laughs> thank you for braving uh, such threats that are uh, coming from uh, different sources uh, still you are moving ahead in documenting the diversity and also creating awareness thanks to the army personnel uh, for providing protection to people to conservationists like you and also conserving the wildlife so i think uh, Uh, the way journey ahead should be smooth we all pray for that thank you for answering and thank you for accepting our invitation to be here to give us this perspective on the himalayan biodiversity hot spot uh, thank you madam thank you so much uh, it was really a pleasure talking to uh, to the people um, i'm sure uh, because this was a very simple presentation i would not i would not have expected questions but thanks a lot for uh, uh, inviting me one and two recognizing what the work that we have uh, the work that we have been doing in this uh, part of the world because this is the part of the world which not many are aware of and uh, you know knowledge is not uh, sent across uh, most of the time so thanks a lot about um, thanks a lot for inviting me and you know identify me for giving this talk thank you madam we will stay connected we will reach out to you in future as well thank you sure thank you uh abhishek will start to the second session yes sir now we have our second speaker with us dr vivek sahu So now I want to call upon Ankita for the introduction of Dr. Sauser. Jaihind and a very good evening to everyone present. Today I Ankita on the behalf of NSA platform welcomes Dr. Vivek Kumar Sahu sir assistant professor of JNRM Port Blair Andaman and Nicobar Islands to put on lights on the topic of biodiversity of Bay Islands. Dr. Vivek Kumar Sahu sir has specialization in parasitology ichthyology cestor taxonomy and keen in environmental studies ornithology and conservation he is a member state uh, he is a member of state board for wildlife andaman and nicobar islands founder member of andaman avian club member of state level zoonosis committee chairman of nature club member of editorial board of international journal flora and fauna member of various scientific bodies of national and international repute he has published about 31 articles in international and national journals dr sahu uh, sahu sir has conducted presented papers participated resource person for more than 70 national and international seminars 
workshops, refresher courses, FDPs, etc. He is trained rover leader and presently associated with largest youth organization, National Cadet Corps, as associate NC officer or the caretaker. A very hearty welcome to you, sir. And you may now please proceed with your presentation, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your kind words, Ms. Ankita. Uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting me and very good uh, introduction to all of you. So, today's uh, topic for me uh, Okay, so uh, everyone able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So thank you very much for, for, for inviting me to deliver a lecture. The call of the wild 2.0. This will be a webinar on wide diversity hotspots of India. My topic is biodiversity of Bay Islands. My topic, today's topic is uh, constrict, uh, constricted, consisted of uh, uh, some introduction about the uh, uh, board player, especially the clicking list of uh, freedom fighters, uh, that is the cellular chain. I'll, after that, the biogeographical conditions of uh, Bay Islands, the diversity of Andaman and Nicobar Islands, and the tribes of Andaman and Nicobar Islands. And uh, as an institute, what we are doing, what we should do in future to conserve the biodiversity of Bay Islands. In conclusion, okay. So, first of all, this is the year 75th year of India and independent, independent, independence. Uh, we are celebrating the Amrit Mahotso. So, Port Player is very well known for the cellular jail as the pilgrimages of Indian freedom fighters. The Andaman Islands are an Indian archipelago in the Bay of Bengal between India and Myanmar, formerly Burma. Port Blair, the archipelago's capital, is on South Andaman Island and is a gateway to neighboring islands. The city cellular jail is named. The city cellular jail is named for its uh, myriad small cells made for the solitary confinement of Indian freedom fighters during the 90s, 1900s. Uh, the, the cellular jail, also known as the Kalapani, was a colonial prison in Andaman and Nicobar Island, India. Many notable independence activists. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, Dr. Vivek, sorry to interrupt. I'm Jay Shankar. Oh. Sir, uh, yeah. can you put the slide into the slideshow mode, full screen? Uh, yes, it is in full, you... full screen mode. Uh, you Abhishek and see? others, can you confirm? Uh, sir, actually, I... it's showing in the normal form. Oh, no, but uh, I am uh, in the full. Presentation mode. Okay, once again, I try. Yes, sir, you can unshare and uh, uh, reshare again. Okay, and then stop sharing. Yes, okay. yes. Stop, stop sharing. Uh, Is it? Is it clear now? It's uh, okay now? It's in the normal mode only, not it. Uh, okay. There's an option on top, sir, the slideshow. Yes, uh, in my, in my, in my, um, I, in my screen, I am in, in the PowerPoint presentation mode, uh, PowerPoint, but uh, I don't know why you are able to see.
if the participants yes. are OK, we'll go ahead with the same mode. Yes, sir, please proceed. OK, so actually I am in full screen mode, so I cannot see the, uh, the team. The lecture, so if anything is going to be happen, uh, please let me know, right? Sure, sir. Ah, okay. So the cellular jail, uh, uh, many uh, freedom fighters, uh, independence activities, activists, including Bhattis of the Yogan, Sukhla, Vinayak Savarka, uh, etc. And so many more uh, unsung heroes were there, and uh, thousands of thousands of freedom fighters were uh, dead inside the jail without uh, leaving any marks. So today the complex serves as the National Memorial Monument and it is uh, included in, in the World Heritage Site. So this is the port clear, uh, cellular jail. This is the front view. This is uh, in lawn area where uh, the freedom fighters were kept for uh, work. They came out from the jail and uh, then from the cells and work over here different kind of uh, penal work and this is the inside cell it is a uh, seven feet by four feet cell in which uh, one person is uh, kept isolated condition in the balcony okay so another yes your slides are not changing oh my It is working now. Working? Changing or not? Yes, I, it is changing. It's gone to the launching pad and then the photographs oh, of okay. uh, the jail here, yeah, the cellular jail. Uh -huh. After that, uh, launching pad, right? Yes, sir. Oh. So can I go with this? Okay. Hopefully, I think I mean, uh, right now I close my camera so that I have no problem. With this. Maybe. Okay, the launching pad, uh, Anuman and Nicobar Island. Another uh, strategical importance of the Anuman and Nicobar Islands nowadays. Among the major bottlenecks that control entry to this region are the Malakka Strait and the Six Degree Channel. The Andaman and Nicobar Island lies in a strategically important zone, meaning that India, with its growing naval capabilities, could play a significant role in controlling access. India's ex naval uh, chief admiral R. K. Dhawan recently acknowledged that the Andaman and Nicobar Islands are the very, very important aspect of India's security acting as extended arms of the country. Someone said that India needed to deploy naval assets to the island for surveillance in important sea lines of the communication. The island hosts the Anman and Nicobar Command, the only tri-service geographical command of the Indian Armed Forces. So this is another important fact, uh, so that these uh, islands are important. Now come, come, to the, uh, come to our point, the wildlife. So wildlife, uh, anything that is uh, not inside the house and uh, found in the, uh, not anything that is not domesticated, neither belong to the men or not domesticated is called the wildlife as uh, all are well aware and previous speakers are, are, are talked about the point, uh, what is wildlife. Now importance of wildlife, so this, I think uh, AP, this is also uh, discussed before you. And uh, some important point I mentioned over here, aesthetic value, uh, ethical values, ecological, medicinal research and study, food value, food chain, ecosystem value, commercial value, other uh, others, ivory, tusk, musk, horns, uh, basically, though the traits of uh, wild animals are 
basically for ivory tusk musk and horns etc but uh, many things that are uh, we, we do not know or we do not discuss in uh, the big, in common places that is the uh, com uh, ecosystem values because uh, as a uh, students of biological sciences we must uh, know the ecosystem values because uh, and a key keystone species is a is a species that can maintain and then control the whole ecosystem so that species is more important than the any other species and the top carnivora are uh, basically included in this uh, key, uh, as a keystone species uh, it may be elephant elephant and, and herbivore elephant may be the uh, keystone species or it may be an a uh, starfish inside the marine ecosystem so the keystone species <clears throat> that is uh, important for the uh, to maintain the ecosystem that is uh, 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 away from the human uh, force men cannot be control that uh, only ecosystem services uh, that is a part of uh, the tropic labels and etc they are maintain themselves so wildlife and uh, the other things other than the men they they are equally imp more in, uh, more important than the men uh, regarding the ecosystem the maintenance of ecosystem recycling of the ecosystem recycling of the material energy etc so many of the food foods are uh, we directly or indirectly obtained from the wildlife and research and studies uh, means uh, the all the medicines or uh, the experiment regarding any disease uh, first of all we try upon the animals uh, we cannot directly go for the uh, me uh, 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 medicine trial upon the man so we have uh, the uh, med uh, medicinal values research and study ecological values right now we are celebrating durga puja and today is the dasara so many the animal the plant the flowers are associated with the durga puja with the with our festival like the sera today is the sera and uh, um, to see a roller it is a very good sign and roller again it is a uh, equally important because it is it is uh, the migratory birds so if they are present uh, allow, uh, around us it means our ecosystem is working properly and uh, roller is a uh, insectivorous animal so birds so along with the roller and other birds like drongos they are equally important because they eat the notorious insect that are, that are harmful for our agriculture so this is the high time to for the birds that, that migration is started we see lot of uh, birds around us so uh, on the festival the sera this is as the bird uh, roller is associated with the good fortune uh like others also uh, any god uh, or uh, god is many uh, each and every god of indian indian uh, mythology is associated with a, with a plant with a flower with a fruit with a animal with a bird so these are the ways of uh, conserving the animals our, our each and every day we have many festival and uh, they are associated with the um, our surrounding wildlife as a plant or animal so for for our uh, ethological value our ethical values we need these animals around us are the wild flora and fauna right so after that uh, come to the uh, andaman and nicobar islands so about andaman and nicobar islands the location bay of island bay, uh, these islands are located in the bay of bengal the total number of islands are included right now 572 or uh, it the number may be go beyond this number uh, but right now this is the uh, government data 572 and it may be change in future because uh, recently the definition of uh, islands are going to be changed and uh, uh, exploration are also going to be happen so it may reach more than 572 but right now uh, as on the record uh, island consists of 572 islands 
Uh, number of named Iceland is 173 only, and the rest are unnamed. Anuman group uh, consists of 151 islands and network group 22. Number of inhabitant islands where uh, the population is uh, residing, and they are the 38. And, uh, and uh, out of 38, 25 belong to Anuman group of uh, islands, and rest 13 they belong to the Nicobar group of islands. Total geographical area is uh, 8,249 8, square kilometer in which 668 square kilometer belong to Anuman group and rest uh, 1,981 square kilometer is uh, Nicobar group. Total coastline 1,962 kilometer. Temperature uh, range between, between 80 degrees Celsius to 34 degrees Celsius. Average, an, uh, uh, average annual rainfall is 3000 millimeter. The total land area of uh, approximately uh, 8,249 square kilometer. The largest territory is divided into three districts, uh, right from the north to uh, south. Uh, on the north, northernmost is the north and middle Anuman district, then south Anuman district, in which a portular falls and uh, Nicobar district. Geographically, the islands are part of Long Island Arc, extending from Arakan, Yoma Hill range of Myanmar to the Sumatran range of Indonesia. And the flora of Andaman group of islands, that is why the flora of Andaman group of islands shows closer affinity to the Indo-Myanmar's Thai flora, while the Nicobar group of islands are closer to the flora of Malaysia, Indonesia. The uh, important uh, tourist spot and the uh, islands are the well known for pristine beaches, crystal clear water, and clean environment. India's only active, inactive, and mud volcano is a part of Anuman and Nicobar Islands. Only active uh, island is the Barren Island, the recent, uh, that recently was an outburst to uh, 18, 18, 2018. And after that, it is. Uh, a uh, little bit inactive, but uh, time to time it uh, explore both, explore both are there. Islands have rich biodiversity of flora and fauna with high degree of endemism. The major industry of island, there is no other industry except the tourism industry that is based upon the biodiversity. Because of biodiversity, the sand of because of the diversity of coastal areas means the coastline or means the beaches. Beaches are uh, truly pristine and very much clean and clear water is there. Why? Because uh, the biodiversity of the coastline is very good. Uh, I think uh, as um, we go in the undisturbed areas of the uh, beaches, uh, the, the water and the sand quality is uh, better than the um, beaches that is uh, more people reach there. Because uh, the uh, the are uh, echinoderms means uh, the holothurians the, uh, the density of the holothurian population is more in that, that reason so that they they, they are uh, act like an earth bomb on the land uh, these uh, holothurians are act as the earth bomb of the ocean they they, they they clean the dirt they digest the organic matter so that, and after that uh, digestion, when the sand comes out from the intestine of the holothurians, it is again, it is a very good quality sand and uh, clean and clear up, uh, and uh, without any kind of organic matter. So, uh, Anuman is, uh, Anuman and Kwar Island is uh, best, uh, blessed with the pristine beaches, and that is the uh, most attraction toward the Anuman and Kwar Island. Why uh, Anuman and Nicobar Island have such biodiversity richness? Because uh, Iceland itself uh, create a force to speciation. Uh, you can easily think about uh, if uh, Galapagos Island were not not visited by yeah. the Darwin. So I, uh, if not visited by the Darwin, then uh, I think the theory of uh, Dar Darwinism is not there. It is the island, Galapagos Island, who to seed the thought of uh, Darwinism inside the mind of uh, Charles Darwin. Because island, uh, they create force to a space nearby uh, uh, mainland 
say the, uh, the island of Galapagos, uh, they, they were inhabited by the Darwin's finches. So the uh, diversity of Darwin's finch, finches is increased in, increased in, in, increased in the uh, Galapagos island uh, uh, in comparison to the mainland of that uh, island. Why? Because because uh, there are certain kind of kind of uh, factors are there. Means uh, the situations are there, conditions are there that uh, that condition force that uh, uh, two kind of finches to diversify into fifteen kind of finches. Right. So uh, there are means when an species is reach uh, to the island, island especially the the island that is. Uh, that have the origin of volcanic origin. So uh, earlier, the, these islands are also nagged without any kind of uh, biodiversity. So later on, once they created these Anuman and Nicobar Island have the origin of uh, volcanic origin. So later on, when the uh, species reach to these island, and they, anyhow, uh, one incidence is occur after tsunami of a butterfly that is found uh, in the Thailand, nearby Thailand. After tsunami, it reached into the, uh, reached to the islands. So it may be possible that after the uh, outbreak of an pupas or the adult um, butterflies, they, they um, came into the island through the wind or uh, water, water waves. So, and uh, the larvae reached to this island and here, they got, got the chance to out break and they have a uh, situation they have they, they found a, a food plant so that they emerges out and slowly they establish in this island so this is the theory of um, the diversity or the, uh, of the of any islands these are the principle basic principle so the islands create a force to a species means here the abundance of resources are there the scarcity of uh, predators it it create the chance to any other species any new species any invading species to over species in in these islands another uh, uh, reason for the biodiversity richness is the ecosystem richness in Andaman and Nicobar Island, earlier there, there, um, the distance from north to south is much more. So that uh, they, these uh, different islands have a uh, different kind of ecosystems also. Uh, Nicobar is uh, near to the equator. So they have another uh, different kind of uh, ecosystems. They have tropical rainy forest here and uh, ecosystem, marine uh, ecosystem is there. And uh, we have uh, this mangrove ecosystem. We have a grassland ecosystem. We have hills here, over here. So ecosystem richness is there. So there are three kind of uh, uh, biodiversity: ecosystem biodiversity, species biodiversity, and gene diversity. So uh, these island bestowed with the ecosystem uh, richness, eco diversity. Uh, ecosystem richness so that uh, different kind of ecosystem they provide uh, shelter the food and protection to a particular type of animals so it is hardly surprising that the island manifest biodiversity of extraordinary range within a limited geographical area the unique positioning of these island between the two Hello, uh, sir, you're not audible. Can others confirm if it's same with you? Yes, sir, we can't hear. No, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Yes, Vivek, sir. And those yes, sir. Yeah, sir, I believe there was some connectivity issue. Uh, we are able to hear you oh. now. 
ओके ओके प्लीज प्रोसीड ओके सो इट इज विजिबल माय स्लाइड्स आर विजिबल नाउ आई थिंक सो yes sir it is uh, okay so uh, yeah. another reason for the biodiversity richness is the unique position of these island between the two major biodiversity areas uh, one side it is uh, myanmar and on the other side is the indonesian flora so earlier when uh, these island our as a the northern areas are more like to the myanmaris uh, diversity and uh, the southern part of these island they are more close to the thai malaysian and indonesian floras they so similar to with that kind that floras and faunas so uh, come to the uh, diversity of uh, these islands so uh, plant diversity uh, well in the world is about um, 250000 or uh, in, in india 45000 uh, species are uh, recorded of and uh, in anman and equidal over 2600 species are noted number of plant species per 1000 uh, square kilometer world map uh, the ratio um, the world ratio is 2 while the india's ratio is 14 and anman and equidal is quite high that is 315 so uh, one can imagine the uh, species uh, density diversity uh, in, the, in these islands uh, 40 400 Uh, endemic uh, plant species are there that is that constitute the 15% and 40% of non endemic having extra indian distribution 40 species extremely localized and 50 species collected only once and never again these are the uh, plant species then uh, faunal diversity the total uh, 6500 uh, 40 taxon are identified Out of these 834 are endemic, and the percentage of endemism is 10.44%. Uh, Then uh, insect and mites are 2,256 species, and uh, right now uh, the JSI and BSI are working for to identify and uh, recognize the new species also. So 2,256 species uh, belong. Uh, uh, belong to the insects and mites and 33 species are endemic uh, isoptera coleoptera diptera leptoptera arthroptera hymenoptera these are uh, the different kind of insect that are uh, popularly you know, find here in anman so this is the anman mormon the and and, and, and endemic uh, butterfly at uh, sub species level and that is rare uh, inside our lab on um, the tc khatri was the butterfly man of anman and nicobar island he worked upon the butterflies of anman and nicobar islands and he is the uh, former head of this department of uh, of uh, atolis and another uh, this is the male uh, peplio meo and uh, another the lime butterfly peplio demolias uh, the the great mormon peplio meno Then you can see these are the uh, uh, taxon that are found in our college also. Uh, they are collected uh, photos that were collected inside the college only. This is called animal discount. The clicker. Then we had that place. So uh, it shows the mimicry. Another uh, animal club type. This is also endemic butterflies and animal. Uh, uh, in India, post release on the on this butterfly. Here, yeah, this is the plain tiger, also found in mainland India. Uh, uh, here, centipede and millipede. So, 22 species uh, are identified from the island, and the four out of four, 22 four are the endemic. The spiders and scorpions. So. 94 species are identified from the islands out of 94 uh, 8 species are endemic and recently uh, a researcher worked upon the spider of uh, anman and nicobar and he also found some uh, new reports to these islands crustaceans 607 species are uh, recorded from the island 62 are the endemic and seven species are of economic value mollusca mollusca 
1583 species are recorded from this island out of 1583 119 species are endemic to this island and 68 species of gastropod 35 species of bivalve one species of chitin and 15 species of nudibranch uh, dr apte uh, that is uh, from bnhs uh, work upon the nudibranch of this island and, and uh, collect some new taxon from the islands if i know them so 430 species out of 88 species of the uh, sea cucumbers are identified and six species are the endemic to this island uh, sea cucumber especially uh, they are these are the main attraction of this island uh, many poachers are came over the human waters to collect the uh, sea cucumbers especially from burma Burma and from Thailand also. So, uh, poachers are <coughs> uh, here in Anman water to collect the sea cucumbers. And these uh, sea cucumbers uh, diversity is also very much higher in these islands. So that is why they are the responsible for the fish and clear uh, beaches. And uh, the sea animals and clone fishes, these are the pictures I have put it to show all the students. Uh, the, uh, these pictures I got from the other side and <coughs> barrel sponge, the branch coral, acropora, brain corals. These are all of the uh, human waters. Uh, feather skull, the coral colony, the surface, uh, the species, the stone species inside the uh, marine ecosystem. Surfaces, uh, stereos species. Now come to the fish diversity. So world uh, fish diversity, 31,000 species, and, uh, and the genera 4,158, and uh, all these uh, taxon belong to the 482 is, um, families. While in India, 2,500 species are identified, and then included into the 1,022 genera and 117 families. And one Nicobar Islands, 1,000. 484 uh, taxon are identified and published by the JDSI. Uh, they belong to the, the all the taxons belong to the uh, 603 genera and 177 families. Mangrove species, uh, that the species that is associated with the mangrove ecosystem, the number of species is, number of species is 295. These are some uh, uh, deep water fishes that are recently published by the JDSI. Uh, the is right side. They have uh, inflorescent in their body. This surface species uh, has some tribal dinometers. The amphibian group, so 23 species are identified out of 23, three species are endemic. And reptiles, 104 uh, species of reptiles are identified right from the saltwater crocodile up to the um, lizards. This is the uh, di diurnal uh, green lizard from the Manifensis, uh, commonly found upon the, especially the trees like the green trees uh, like bananas. This is again an endemic species, the island forest lizard found uh, all over the islands, that would be and one pit uh, wife is also endemic for the skin cobra. It's not endemic to island, but uh, uh, very common. And one cobra, that is the uh, endemic to at service species level. And one green brown pet is also endemic to these islands. That's what the cobra is. But uh, 350 species are recorded out of 315 species and two species are endemic because they are residents of the area. Violet Kutsu, it is in the time of the situation, and uh, this uh, young one changed into the male. Uh, when it converts and it completes the uh, adult, the whole color will change from green to violet. Uh, the green imperial chasing and there is a new sock owl, parental 
scopes out and multi burn out thyroid alpha which is also um, endemic as the service species level and uh, it's also found in our toilets so this is the hot spot in multi scopes out so it's endemic to these islands flower petal black nape monarch Aggregates, uh, where intermediate aggregate is small aggregate and large aggregate all are found. Besides the, the purple aggregate are also here. Purple heron are also found in these islands. And manhood pectus. Mammals, uh, uh, mammals, um, larger mammals are not here in Anumatan. And uh, carnivore are also absent from here, not found in, the, in these islands. Uh, in 62 species of mammals are found out of 62 12 are endemic the bats and the wild boar that is the food of the tribals of uh, anman and nitovar islands the white cats and uh, dugong are also found dolphins sometimes whales are also reached to these islands so ecosystem uh, 100 189 species, uh, 200 are found in the uh, marine ecosystem, means the coral uh, ecosystems. That is the uh, most diversified ecosystem of this island. After that, mangrove ecosystems are there, that, uh, in which 277 species are endemic, and uh, 102 species are found in the grassland ecosystem and 101 species are found in the open sea. So 279 species are overlapping with these ecosystems. Uh, now come to the, uh, another diversity of uh, the island, that is the tribal uh, diversities. So tribe uh, defined as the group of families having a common name, members of which occupy the same territory, to speak the common dialect, language, and observe certain taboos regarding marriage, occupation, or having a self-sufficient economic unit and having a unifying social organization. That is different from other or other group or other um, similar kind of group of men, human beings. So tribes refer to early settlers or the autochthons of our Indian population, popularly known as the Adivasi, also known as the Vanjati, Girijan, Jana, Sadhuzan, uh, or Adam Jati. So, diversity, uh, there are 4,635 communities identified in the studies by the Anthropological Survey of India under its mammoth group, popularly known as the people of India. So, all over the India, these are the communities that are uh, designated as the tribal. Uh, and out of uh, 4,635, 461 indigenous communities are identified by the survey who are popularly known as the tribes in Indian subcontinent. There are a number of cultural traits which differentiate from one community to other. Indigenous communities of India have diversified cultural tradition in its true sense. means the tribes of the you know, Northeast is different from the uh, Tribes of Anuman and Nikwa are, 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 are any other kind of uh, uh, group of that is found in the different places. Uh, there are a number of <coughs> indigenous communities of India have diversified cultural tradition in its true sense. Somewhere the uh, knowledge is very much essential, somewhere knowledge is uh, restricted to so the, the sense in the dialect, in the language, in the food, in the custom, in their uh, dress. Dresses. So, uh, India is a really diversified uh, country. The, the tribal communities in India are tradition oriented in the strict sense of terms and they exhibit a diverse way of life. The, each group has its own tradition or the way of life. So, they, they are to be found in uh, variegated labels of socio cultural development. They are characterized by having diverse economical prospects for prospective starting from the primitive food gathering space of subsistence to the up to the date up to date uh, pattern of industrialization uh, like nicovaris when i talk to the nicovaris uh, they are not fond of money 
they uh, they are just uh, they are telling uh, money is not essential for us in the com in their community but, but when they enter into our community they need money so this is the uh, thinking they, they don't want money they don't want any kind of jewelry they don't want any kind of processing that i have that we have right so it's still uh, they are um, uh, poor gathering this space they, they they don't need any kind of uh, subsistence uh, modern uh, artifact uh, modern uh, air conditioner bikes or like sentinel the one of the uh, tribes they are totally cut off from the world they don't know what is mobile what is going on okay so they are characterized by having diverse economic prospects starting from the simple food gathering industries of subsistence to the up to the update of the industrialization the tribes in india are a lot of uh, population so i don't want to go deep into that data so tribes are gone that is the uh, hill kankal or around in great and money so Uh, not only the great and money uh, and money and wealth are created by the six different kinds of different tribes and they are different not only the physique but also in the language and their belief and their faith and their customs and their food and their in their amusement so act each and every thing and uh, they are close closely uh, residing near by the islands and still they are different right so based on economic aggregate tribes are classified as a food gatherer including hunting and fishing for um, pastoral communities shifting cultivators plow cultivators artisan group trade and commerce casual laborers agriculture and industries so food gatherer include and hunting categories may darwa gongi sentinel great and amazing song that is all the food that is and hunting and fishing these are the main activities of main livelihood for them pastoral communities like toras of tamil nadu ladies of himachal plow cultivation so so these are for the farmers and tribes of west bengal jharkhand artisan group uh, agaria konsa mara porta seminar trade and commerce that will never be the city of andhra and the tribes who are displaced and have no land they are uh, from the desert lake the tribes they into part of the uh, they don't have land they don't have uh, forest so they came into the management in, in our social system and uh, as they don't have an end of uh, land So it was observed that CBTs were CBTs, particular well-developed tribal groups, were mainly forest dwelling groups, being small in number, had not attained any significant level of social and economic progress because their number is very much smaller. and uh, generally inhabited remote forested localities so people are not reached over there often reported declining trend of their population now this activity uh, is included uh, all five tribes of anwani tower except the nikobar uh, nikobar is the population of nikobar is more so that they are not something um, of these as of anuman and nikobar the ang jarawa ang also called the jarawa the great anuman is angi sentinelis and sompen except nikobar is five out of six are drawing major attention because of uh, attention of administration policy maker and academic mainly because of the nomads or semi nomads and level of their socio economic development are and and you can these uh five tribes of uh, anman and nikobar they they have they are they have facing major attention like the 
ETAs of Malaysia and uh, Sumang of Philippines and other mobile colleges such as in a way in Nidhi, Brazil, in Canada, Gurani, Koiwa, Brazil, Panara, and uh, Parthana, Brazil, and Uruchi, Uri, etc. The great enemies are on the verge of extinction. Like other um, tribal tribes of the world that are on the verge of extinction, great enemies are also on the verge of extinction because of once they were, there were uh, their number was quite sufficient and uh, uh, more than 15,000 and uh, once uh, their um, groups, more than 15 groups were there. Some uh, some authors have told that there, there were 15 groups, some are 10 and some, some say 7. So if we take average, so 10 groups are of great amount of money for inhabited uh, in these islands and they fought a war of poverty against the villagers. So, uh, population of Andaman and Nicuba tribes, so Jarawa, uh, male 274. And, uh, this is uh, the, the, these are the data of our census of 2018. So, male uh, Jarawas are 274, female 240, and uh, the, they are residing in 1000. 28 square kilometer reserve, so um, that is a protected area for especially for the Jarawa. Ongi 66 male and 52 females, total 119 people are there, and uh, 732 uh, square kilometer reserve for the Ongi's people. Great and money is 31 plus 8. Uh, plus 8 means 31 is of native tribe. And eight people are included from outside in, the, in their families. Means uh, eight people married to uh, Nicobari, uh, great and money people. So now altogether there are uh, uh, 58 plus 70 population. There. And uh, 70 square kilometer is there for the great and money uh, inside the Strait Island. Sompen 145. Uh, male, 91 female, so altogether 236, 992 square kilometer area is of the great Nicobar, and means uh, not the great Nicobar. It's restricted to this uh, Sompen. The Sompen and the Nicobaris, they are distributed in, in the uh, southern group of island, that is Nicobar group. Sentinel, uh, as we know that we don't have any connection with the sentinel and so we don't have exact data of the um, sentinel people. The, the area that is not sentinel island is a risk for the sentinel. Recently, uh, three years before, one uh, missionary is uh, died but, uh, when it reached uh, to the north sentinel island. Uh, without permission, and uh, that killed by the sentinel people. Nicobaris, uh, uh, Nicobaris is more than 7,000, and they are also uh, restricted. Some islands are restricted to Nicobaris only, but uh, they are mingled with the today's uh, uh, population. Means the uh, outside area for I would mention that the islands they have been to such a mix of over and they are they are not um, including the activities. So uh, the great and money. So among indigenous groups, the great and money were the first to come into contact with the outsider and first to pay the heavy price for it. In the historic account of Kerala, they have been falsely described as people who eat human flesh, quite raw. Their complexion is black. They are their frizzled, their uh, countenance and uh, eyes frightful, their feet are very large and almost a cubic in length and they go quite neck. Earlier uh, the, uh, about um, this uh, false impression created by the travelers that they are the cannibalic. They are not cannibalic. They kill the men, but uh, they do not eat the men. However, these people who are now believed to have been living in this island for about 60,000 years, that's a question which escaped 
from Ross Island on 23rd April 1868, 10 days before the for a period of one year and 34 days before returning to the settlement to report about the impending threat of the settlement. And the Battle of Hoverdin gave a taste of the battle to the civilized world to the Armani. The this person, the Ruth Master Bari, was the first civilized people that uh, made the entry into the inside the uh, uh, grid and money. And uh, after that, these uh, great enemies have fought against the British because British, first of all, when they came over there uh, in the 1700 so they reached to the Ross Island and found Peter. They were not. But that's one to start a female settlement. It's a female corner colony over here. Right. So they, they, they landed to the Ross Island and they used uh, the Viper Island and the Atom Island because uh, both here, where the natural port is there, so that uh, it can be still over there. And uh, these islands, these uh, port layers, uh, and the Unified Islands are the house of the great and money. So they confronted with the uh, first and the pay, pay for it. Uh, the Battle of Hoverdin uh, that happened on 17 May 1869. In this battle, uh, maybe uh, some authors say uh, thousands of uh, tribes still by the Mitchells and some days are more than 1,500 types mm -hmm. and great animals still by the Mitchells. Uh, the second tribe is the Jarawa, so they are approximately 400 members of numeric Jarawa. They have been in the of uh, 450 people in Jadaras, as they call their names. Like most tribal people who live south of the country on their ancestral land, the Jarawa continue to thrive and their number are the, they hunt pig and turtle and fish with bows and arrows in the coastal community for, for crabs and fish. They also gather food, wild food, creepers and honey. Both Jaraba men and women and fellows and wild honey from the flock. They speak of Jaraba people, the only the happiest people of the world. The only tribe is uh, one of the primitive tribe of electrical animals belong to the Nebraska Rachel stock. Initially, the arms were scattered all over the little animal island on different banks. The Ongi speaks Ong's dialect as common language, and we contest the Ong's made in 1835. However, they still observe the tribal rights in this way, but prior to that, they, they, are, you know, they had been several violent and hostile encounters with the Christians. Something sometimes the uh, latter got killed and uh, on other occasions the arms that they retreat. The armed people uh, with their goods and uh, their homes. So sometimes the Mongoloid or uh, sometimes people live in the interior of Great Nicobar Island. They tend to avoid contact with outsiders and uh, their environment was uh, so challenging that few people and uh, enter their densely forested inhabited, uh, forested habitat. According to George Weber, the Sampan have Mongolite ancestors. The ancestral Sampan came to Great Nicobar from Sumatra more than 10,000 years ago. However, the Sampan are coming under increased pressure uh, from the new settlers of on Great Nicobar and their also survival is uncertain. Nowadays, Sampan when men in people and uh, when you come in touch and then the uh, police uh, police force mm -hmm. and the people some can go so violent uh go for be violent. The Nicobar is the most people, the Nicobar is people are uh, uh Austro Asiatic speaking people of the Nicobar Island. The term Nicobar is refers to the dominant and tribe of the Nicobar Island. On each island the people have a specific name but together they are the Nicobar is so, uh, in each each island has its own group of Nicobaric people and their dialect, their rituals are quite different from them. But together they are uh, the Nicobaric. They call themselves Holchu means the friend. Now they are not Nordic. Medic, uh, the Nicobaric may not have been the first people to live in the island. 
They appear to have shared the islands with some friends from came to the islands earlier. These are Nicobarous people, Mosari people, and uh, this is the Pythias Debra. Uh, this is an India an international event and uh, recently uh, it was the number one cyclist in the world. And uh, uh, right now, in the six uh, medals were won in the national games that is uh, going on in Gujarat uh, by the Nicobarous people. Uh, uh, David Bacon is the one of them uh, who won the is, uh, in India, uh, most of the cyclic event winner are belong to the uh, Nicobaris community, Nicobaris tribes. Not only in national events, but also in the uh, international events. The Sentinel are, uh, are the Kennedy, or the Sentinel also known as the Sentinel and the North Sentinel Islanders are an indigenous group of people inhabited inhabit North Sentinel Island in the Bay of Bengal, designated as a particular vulnerable tribal group, unlike the other Sentinels, appear to have consistently refused any interaction with the outside world. They are hostile to outsiders and have killed people who have forced or landed on the, on the island. In 1956, the government of India declared North Sentinel Island a tribal reserve and prohibited travel within three miles of the beach. It further maintained a constant armed patrol to prevent uh, intrusion by outsiders. There is significant uncertainty unfair, uh, unfair as to the group size, with estimated ranging between 15 to 500 individuals, but mostly between 15 to 200 people. These are the pictures that are taken by the aerial, uh, by aerial group and uh, from the ships that are passing up by nearby the North Sentinel Island. Still, they are uh, untouched. Major threat to the wildlife of uh, unmanned environments, so habitat to this. It's not the main threat to the fauna in the island. They might deforestation affect the flora and fauna directly as well as indirectly. The direct effects of consequence of loss of food, plants, shelter, and breeding grounds for the animals in there force the fauna for most predator and great climate calamities. Deforestation includes uh, intra and interspecies pressure on forest farms that mean their survival. Other causes of depletion of fauna are agriculture, monocultural, agroforestry for growing cash crop and vegetation. And indiscriminately use of insecticide, herbicide, and fertilizers to increase the yield, poison, and kill the immature stages of butterfly, honeybees, moths, etc. Organization encourage human habitation, leads to the pollution, introduces species, disturb the balance in nature, commercial exploitation, illegal trade, pollution, and other uh, things that is uh, distress the ecosystem, natural ecosystem and the mainland also found in the islands nowadays. So, uh, so good, but uh, I, 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 I want to show some more pictures. Uh, as an institute, what we should do to, to, to inculcate the habits of conservation among the youth. So, be organized for watching for students and for other people also. Uh, nature camp, tracking, and uh, we group together for uh, bird, bird, bird counting. Uh, often, more often, we go for the bird watching, filming, exercise. Uh, so, we can um, people in the hands on training or um, uh, the light demonstration of butterflies that is. Uh, Done in the department. First day after hatching, first section, so the final is the larva, and it's the larva, larva going on. Progress on the pupation, and this is the pupa. After the pupation of the same, this uh, larva turn into this pupa, and later on, much down in this good fly. This uh, uh, organized as a field people, we organize rallies to the people and uh, 
also in the department we have manipulated the democratic exhibition so that people of the department as well as the college uh, make aware of the diversity and the wall making and the different pillars not only by the geology also by the different other pillars uh, botany and just of the and tourism uh, department also and the wall making so that makes aware the students and the common people who visit the Police and uh, so collectively they are often organized for uh, collectively exhibition regarding the biodiversity of the island and uh, flora and fauna. We can organize a uh, competition, various competition to create the awareness about the wildlife conservation, like demonstration of the snake handling, so that you can uh, not get fear from the snakes. Be friendly about the snakes. Joining hands together with the different departments like forest and science and technology department, science center, so uh, that helps you know, expose to so that expose to the students what they are doing. Forest department also organize uh, events and uh, with the world festival function organizing the in our college. The couple lectures and the prepared. Days, elephant days, days, so that people are aware about the wildlife. If once the people are aware about the wildlife, they should try to protect them also. Uh, I I want to share one incident over here. Uh, one species of kingfisher that is found not only in the Manali, but also found in the mainland India. That is a ruddy kingfisher, but uh, uh, once the kingfisher kingfisher want to make a calendar of twelve uh, species of kingfishers found in the found in India, they collected eleven other species of kingfisher of India in mm -hmm. India, but they failed to collect the pick or the a single pick of ruddy kingfisher in the Sundarban. So they came to the islands for the Ruddy kingfisher and they caught over here. So one bird uh, is important. Uh, means it 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 create a lot of change in the mindset because uh, people are hunting birds for just for amusement, and people can earn money to conserve it because islands are the hotspot for the majority of birds also. And many birds that are not found in the breeding areas, they are found as the, these islands are small pockets of land. So their abundance is quite more here. So the the birds that are not uh, seen in their breeding places, they are found in Andaman and Nicobar Island as a migratory bird. So we can see over here. And uh, one uh, person in the islands uh, protect these birds in their uh, land, in their uh, agriculture form, in their uh, marine bagicha, so that uh, the birds make the permanent habitat, and uh, people can earn from that, that bird. So this is uh, my uh, conclusion. Is that I want to. Um, The students that we must feel this uh, nature, we may be keen to observe the nature, we may be keen to find out, uh, to, to know the ecosystem services of these animals. Like uh, honeybees, honeybees are also they are the neglected part because, uh, because of uh, uh, Constantly use of herbicide and herbicide and insecticides to control the insects, and these are paying the cost of these herbicides. They are actually going to be extinct. So uh, uh, Albert Einstein said, once uh, if we took out the bees from the nature, we will lost the, all the food within us uh, three four years. We will collapse our ecosystem because they, are, they have a great importance in the pollination. Thank you, thank you very much for listening to me.
thank you sir for a very detailed and useful session related to silence and its biodiversity the slides were really informative for each one of us to have a basic outline on the biodiversity of the island so now the session is open for interaction on the question on the question answer if anyone has to say Kita, you read out questions from the chat. Oh. Okay. Uh, so those questions, are there strict rules concerning the introduction of the topic? If there are, are they effective to mention the topic for uh, introduction? Actually, uh, quarantine is not working properly over here. So there are rules uh, not to introduce uh, uh, exotic species in this island. But uh, already many birds and animals are introduced here. But uh, not a very strict rule is uh, followed by the forest department as uh, quarantine is not working properly. Uh, thank you again, sir, for making us know about the uh, use of the biodiversity. What do you want to say? Uh, uh, I just wanted to ask Dr. Vivek Sahu, uh, sure. is there any current uh, data on these uh, tribal communities, indigenous communities, because we fear how the tsunami could have affected or other health uh, reasons. Is there a, a, any central agency that's documenting following it? Yes, yes uh, there are so many agencies like Anthropological Survey of India is uh, working on the tribals and, and uh, up beside the Anthropological of India and country is also working. Anuman and Nicobar Tribal Research Institute is also working on the tribes of Anuman and Nicobar Islands, especially on the tribes. But their data, they are not uh, quite sharing with other countries. They, they kept it, uh, they have some secret policies. And uh, no one can allow to, these, uh, to reach over there in the tribal reserve areas. So the data is uh, restricted only to the department. Hello, is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, oh. sir. Thank you. Uh, sir, I have a question. How important oh, is to yes. to save the culture of the culture of the tribal peoples for saving the for the conservation of wildlife, sir? The tribal culture is. Uh, is uh, any race or any tribe is known for their culture. If the culture is destroyed, the whole civilization is destroyed, means they lost their identity. And uh, as we see, we are doing uh, modern agriculture since uh, after, after Green Revolution, right? Before that, we are doing. But after uh, uh, nearly 70 years, right? So after 70 years, what we are seeing, what is going to the, what is happening with the nature, uh, the whole ecosystem is disturbed. While these uh, tribes are uh, uh, living there since uh, more than 60,000 years, some tribes are there, more than 60,000 years, and still they are self-sustainable. Because their practices are sustainable practices. They, they do not have fridge, so they do not store the things, for tomorrow. They live in present and uh, they take from nature whatever is the need, not the greed. So their culture, their, their civilization, their language and uh, uh, that is uh, quite sustainable and uh, they can sustain in this island with, without any assistance of so-called modern world. So that culture is uh, quite good and self-sufficient. They are self-sustainable group of the people that are living in this island. Otherwise, they are a small pockets of the islands 
that is difficult to survive over there if we uh, if we if our uh, customs and rituals are not fit for that uh, particular environment over here uh, when uh, when uh, uh, visitors come to first so they they uh, after some time they left these islands and they said that uh, these islands are not fit to live over there but uh, the, the tribes are living there they have their own traditional system, medicinal system they, they don't want to uh, go to the uh, medical college or hospitals they they have their own system of medicine uh, in the uh, abadin war before the, the rudna tiwari when reached to these andamanis great andamanis people so great uh, by the attack of great andamanis uh, he got many wounds six wounds and uh, when the peoples of great uh, this tribe great andamanis accept the rudna tiwari they heal their uh, uh, heal the wound of rudna tiwari within a uh, month only one wound that is uh, nearby eye broke it take 3 months otherwise uh, without antibiotics without any surgery they just use their own medicinal system they use their uh, folklore medicine and uh, plant herbs and uh, soil by using of soil and herbs they cure the uh, wounds of dutna tiwari so as uh, other things uh, are we think uh, 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 they are not getting any disease yes they are getting disease but they have their own system self system system so that they, uh, if their culture they they can save their culture nowadays great and manis lost their culture they lost their language they lost their many things that uh, now they are the common people of uh, uh, like other indians because identity of any tribe is from their culture their rituals their uh, their language if they are there so they are tribes otherwise they are not tribe they are just common people okay yes sir thank you sir huh. any other uh, thank you sir for making to more about the biodiversity of our island and enlightening our thoughts for the accepting the invitation and taking out time for the national webinar on biodiversity hotspots of india thank you sir jahin and a very happy birthday thank you thank you very much jahin uh the final vote of thanks is pending uh before that uh, participants can view the chat box we have put in links for our social media handles uh do follow them that's where you will get to see all these recorded versions of the video uh also the feedback form is being posted kindly fill in the details uh, that is required uh for uh, you to get your participation certificate uh, we have the final vote of thanks abhishek uh, it was a very interesting and informative evening uh, and i truly thank uh, uh, dr sauser and uh, dr marin ma'am uh, for taking out uh, time and to share their research and information with us uh, i also uh, i also thank uh, the participants uh, who were present for the webinar and uh, i wish best of luck to both of the guests for their future research and endeavors uh, on the behalf of nsa i would like to express my uh, gratitude to the management the vice chancellor the registrar and the dean of uh, the university for all their support towards nsa to conduct the webinar Uh, i would also like to thank the department of zoology 
and the office bearers of of the natural science association for the contribution uh, to the success of the webinar and uh, note that the uh, there will be a link in the chat box and you have to fill the form to receive the certificates thank you Thank you. Uh, special thanks to the student coordinators of this webinar. In NSA, we have this practice of putting student coordinators to conduct webinars. So that's how we are empowering students. For this, it was uh, Abhishek, uh, Maithili and Chaitanya. Thank you all three of you for putting your efforts in organizing this national webinar on Biodiversity Hotspots your spots of India, contacting the speakers. We had four uh, uh, speakers from the ground from four biodiversity hotspots of the country. Yesterday we had Mr. Lal Monsanga speak on the Indo Burma region, and uh, Mr. Sachin from uh, Mr. Lal Monsanga from Mizoram, Mr. Sachin from Isa Trivandrum spoke on the Western Ghats. Uh, today we had the first session, Dr. Marin speak on the Himalaya, specifically to Jammu and Kashmir. And uh, also in the second session, Dr. Vivek Sahu speaking on the Sunda land, the Andaman and Nicobar in specific. We also touched areas relating to pitofauna, plant uh, insect interaction and floral diversity, uh, general diversity of Jammu and Kashmir, including primates, and the diversity of the Bay Islands today. Uh, also, uh, the indigenous communities, the diversity and their contribution. Uh, we need to conserve nature and we need to cherish the diversity that prevails in this four biodiversity hotspots of our country. Also, there are World Heritage Center sites, there are biodiversity profile regions and the eco sensitive uh, zones, protected areas. Uh, we will focus on these in the days to come as part of creating awareness of these uh, biodiversity rich areas. Uh, thanks to the uh, department, my colleagues, and uh, also to the management for supporting National Science Association uh, in all the webinars that we conduct. The Vice Chancellor, uh, Registrar, Dean, uh, for all the support and encouragement. Thanks to all the office bearers of NSA. Uh, special thanks to Adena to uh, reaching out through the publicity team. Uh, to different parts of the country and to different people uh, in joining this webinar. Thanks to all the office bearers and uh, every volunteer of NSA and participants from different parts of the country. Uh, with that, we are done with the two day national webinar on the biodiversity hotspots of India. See you all soon day after we have the cheetahs reintroduced into India. We have Mr. Ravi Perera, a specialist in that area, who will speak to us on the cheetah reintroduction in India. Uh, if you're not registered, please register. We have a day after evening on the cheetah reintroduction in India. That also is an international webinar, uh, national webinar. Uh, uh, so kindly register. Uh, with that, we are done with this. Uh, thank you all. Abhishek, any other query? No, sir. We completed our webinar today. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Take care.